nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of rain. Welcome to a new day. Step up in the oracle. Silver and black, you know, we're so historic. Many backbreakers, many chain treasures. The other teams only wish they could measure. Success is the business. You be my witness. Come feel the wrath of an Oakland menace. From state to state. In any given study, it's the Raider attack. Strap them up and let's play. It's a black attack laced with silver, and we deliver. Guaranteed to make it show the past quiver. Look in the mirror, search your soul in the black hole. Fourth and goal, you couldn't cross the goal if you're paid toll. Knuckle up, get on the line, we going 99. Y-D-S, Y-E-S, take this form to your chest, cause you're with the... Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Inbound with the Oakland Raiders. I'm Melinda Torgerson, and joining me today is Lamar Houston. Hello, Lamar. Hi, how are you doing? Very good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of background on Lamar before we get started with our interview. Lamar attended high school at Thomas B. Doherty High, where he ran track, played basketball, and also football. In 2008, Lamar decided to attend the University of Texas where in just two short years, he was chose in the second round pick of the 2010 NFL Draft. Lamar, how did that feel the day that you found out that you had made it and you were in the NFL? It was a blessing. Uh, I was, I was uh, elated, excited. My family was there with me. I was in New York. Uh, it was a once in a lifetime, ex- once in a lifetime experience. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, an experience most will never so thank you for sharing Very that with us. Yes, you are. And thanks for sharing with us. Um, as a defensive end, can you tell us exactly um, what your position is and what you do? Um, as a defensive end, you're basically the guy who uh, keeps everything contained on the outside edges of your line. Um, you also paid to get the quarterback and make this nice. uh, in the pass game and in the run game play very stout and strong. So uh, linemen aren't getting up to linebackers. Excellent. Sounds like a hard job, but you're doing good at it. Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult job, but it can be done. Good. Um, going back to high school, um, what were some of the challenges that you had in keeping a schedule and and modifying uh, balancing during football season? Oh, uh, you know, uh, what I used to do is uh, take my time up and split it up like this. Uh, basically, I go through a full day of school and I'd have practice. Then after practice, when I got home, I'd immediately go home and do my homework for about two hours. And then the rest of the night, just kind of veg and watch TV or whatnot. So you did have downtime. Yes, That's I did great. have a lot that of downtime. That is really great. And so um, I do have a question about when you decided to attend the University of Texas, what made you choose that school? Did you have multiple offers from multiple schools? Um, there was a lot of schools. Uh, I had a lot of offers. Uh, LSU, USC, Nebraska, a lot of places. Uh, I can't really name them all, so many, but... Uh, well, that's very, that's, that's humbling. Yeah, the main, uh, main factor for me was me and my parents prayed about it, and God told me to go to the University of Texas, and that's where I chose. Excellent. Um, you know, what, what was it that you majored in when you were Communications. Into- really? Yes, corporate communications. Wow. Yeah. That's very impressive. <laughs> so, um, while you were in school, uh, did you utilize any of the resources like around you, the resources that they had available to you? Oh, of course. Uh, when we were in college at the University of Texas, they offered uh, tutor time or basically study time where we had time to work with different tutors and in, in any subject you needed while you were in college. Also, it was just that time to, you could have to, just to give yourself that space to do your work on wow. a regiment in a routine-like schedule. Oh, that sounds very structured. It is. It's very so, nice. do you have any advice on uh, maybe for students that may be trying to go down the same path you are? Um, do you have any advice on how important it is to utilize the resources that are actually around them or near them if they're not using them? Oh, yeah, there's, uh, it's very important to use the resources around you. Like I said, at Texas, I used it and uh, it helped me be on the honor roll two years in a row um, at their academic center there. They, they worked really well with the players. So if you have any access to resources like a tutor or 
study time or a study center, I, sh I suggest the best thing you do is at least try and get in there two, maybe an hour a day. You know, that'll make a difference. Excellent. Well, and, and for those that don't make it to the pros, we know there's, everyone can't Everybody be where can't you are. Everybody can't be an What is it that you think that they should, um, they should do to get their degree and stay in school? How important do you think it is? Um, you know, it's, there's a lot of different avenues that you can choose to go through to get your degree. You know, it's not necessarily that you, you know, you'll get a scholarship off top or, you know, that uh, you can get an academic scholarship off top. Th those things are, are very far and few in between and, and uh, it's very fortunate when you do receive one of those. So, right. you know, there's other ways like you could start at a community college and work your way into getting to a junior college or work your way to getting a college. Uh, there's government funding for different people who have a uh, hard time getting into school or paying for school. So there's different avenues. It's so you just good have to, to hear you say that. It really is. Yeah, yeah that's excellent. Excellent answer. Um, as far as football and academics and your social life, how hard was it for your time management in college versus high school? Was that a big transition um, or was it relatively the same? In college, it was a little different because you had a lot more freedom. And oh, you uh, you're starting to become your own adult and okay. you're basically the one giving yourselves the rules. So uh, yeah. besides being on the football team and us having that time where we had to have study hall after practice and things like that, um, I would suggest the best thing for people is to just, you know, make sure you set your priorities to where it makes sense to you. Um, it's not necessarily about someone else or what makes sense to someone else, but as long as you have your priorities set, and it's it's, uh, it's smooth for you. Uh, you pick your own process. I well, think. Okay, so you think it's more individual. Yes. But yeah, I'm sure it's it's hard. It is tough. So um, eventually, your NFL career is probably gonna uh, and yes, and unfortunately, hate, we yes. all will hate when that day comes. Yes. But when it does, what do you see yourself doing? Uh, you know, I, I, I've thought about it, and when I first was growing up, I thought about maybe a little commentating and you know whatnot but I don't know I think I'm gonna move in another direction more entrepreneurial or financial uh, aspects of life. Nice, well, that sounds great. Um, we all know that working out and eating right uh, is a must in this field mm -hmm. so when you are off season do you still keep basically the same routine or do you allow yourself some slack? Well you know there's a little bit of time maybe in a month after the season where you have a little time, you know, you eat whatever you want, drink whatever you want. That's your fun time. Yeah, that's your fun time. Uh, but after that, it's eventually you got to get back on the same regiment to build up to where you want to start for the beginning of the season and where you want to end at the end of the season. Understandable. Yeah. So do you have any special diet or workout routines or anything you might be able to share with students? To uh, well, you know, try and, try and have about four or five meals a day, and they aren't necessarily, you know, full course, full four course meal, but it's, you know, you know, like some graham crackers, you know, it's a little snack or some cheeses, some fruit, you know, just keep those things on a daily basis. You eat that to help build your metabolism up right. and then, you know, you burn down the fat and things, whatever you build. That is great advice. Get a lot That's of exactly. In. We all need to be doing that. Yes. Um, how important would you st say it is for students to stay physically athletic, even if they're not playing sports? Well, you know, even if you're not athletic, I think it's important that you get out and, you know, break a sweat, you know, do something yeah. to get your body moving because uh, later on in life, you know, you not being in shape or not keeping your body up can come back to affect you later on. Like you could have diabetes. Um, there's different type of cancers that can form from not exercising there's a lot of things that can go on with your body yeah so absolutely yeah there's been a recent incline as we know with childhood obesity mm -hmm. and do you have any advice on maybe um that you could lend to a student on how to lead like a healthier lifestyle or something that would motivate yeah. them to get up and eat healthy uh, and get moving you know it's a new generation so i think uh you know when i was growing up we were so much, I call it behind the screen, you yeah. know? A lot of kids are behind the screens these days, either computer screens, Absolutely. game screens, yeah. phone screens. You know, just spend some time, get from behind the screen and just go outside and hang out with your friends, you know? Go for a walk or, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be 
the most physical, physically straining thing in the world to do. But you know, just go for a walk or go to the park and get on the slings or you know, do anything like that just to get your body moving. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I did read that you had uh, volunteered for the 2011 GFIT um, mm -hmm. Gatorade event. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Oh, it was great. Uh, we had a we had a nice assembly at Frick Middle School, and all the kids came out from sixth, sixth and seventh grade, and uh, we got to do a bunch of contests with the kids in the gym, and you know they won a couple prizes. But it was basically just getting them to move and getting them to be active and do things from behind the screen. I'm sure that means a lot to them when people yes. like you come out. Oh, it means a lot to us when you, you know you get to spend time with. Uh, with kids who uh, really have no interest in, you know, or it's not, there's no real underlying benefits for them. They're just there because right. they're kids. And I think that's really important. Wow. Well, that's very kind. That's, that's very nice. Um, I do have a question about uh, along your journey. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've gotten a lot of advice from people and a mm -hmm. lot of words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So do you have any words of wisdom or maybe advice that you could share with a student who's maybe reaching out and aspiring to be in a position that you're in today? Um, my most, I guess, uh, if I could just put everything into what people have been advising me over time, it's just, you know, think before you act and uh, make sure that when you have a goal, that you let no one get in between you and succeeding that goal. And uh, it could be grandma, parent, brother, sister, friend, aunt, uncle, nobody. I mean, there was a time I remember when I was in third grade, uh, I had told my teacher that I wanted to uh, play basketball and football in college. And she told me, uh, she's like, do you realize how hard it is to get an athletic scholarship to college? And I was. You know, at the time I was in third grade, so I really didn't understand. And I was just, you know, thinking from a, a child's aspect. And she said that it's, it's hard for you to get a scholarship and it'll be real impossible for you to get a scholarship playing both sports. And um, now that I look at it, that really uh, had an effect on me. I let that get to me and I, and I bought into it. And really I could have gone to college and played two sports and, and done things like that. But I let that hinder me from doing that. So. It's, that's just my advice. That is kids. excellent advice because I know a lot of kids have heard that and parents, they don't necessarily mean mm -hmm. to put their kids in a position like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, you're absolutely right. So I, I really want to take the time to thank you for you're being welcome. here and talking to us. No problem. And I'm Melinda Torgerson and this has been another episode of The Inbound with the Oakland Raiders. Thank you. Raiders! We are a nation of Raiders! It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. Welcome to a new day. Step up in the oracle. Silver and black, you know we're so historic. Many backbreakers, many chain treasures. The other teams only wish they could measure up. Success is the business, you be my witness Come feel the wrath of an Oakland menace From state to state, in any given study It's the Raider attack, strap them up and let's play It's a black attack laced with silver, and we deliver Guaranteed to make it show the past quiver Look in the mirror, search your soul in the black hole Fourth and goal, you couldn't cross the goal If you're paid, toll, knuckle up Get on the line, we going 99 YTS 